Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Friday Forum of the TVPPM Learning Network. We had a good amount of people register because the TV Reach project from the Stop TV Partnership is very popular. And we're uh, looking forward to discussing with everyone today on opportunities. Hello, hello. I'm going to just keep saying hello to people while everyone is joining and we'll let everyone in. If people could please mute themselves when they come into the meeting, because we'll have a few presentations in, in the beginning. Um, when you have questions, and I'm sure you do, please put them in the chat. The chat is open for anyone to put questions in, and we have our, we've asked our panel to um, put questions and some responses in the chat as well. We will also pick up your questions in the discussion afterwards, um, in, after the first presentation. So uh, please feel free to keep on adding your points and your thoughts in the chat. That's the place where we will be looking at. You can also raise your hands during the meeting if you uh, would like to ask a question and we will call on you to um, ask your question live. So while we are starting and we have almost everyone and now admitted, I would like to formally welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining this Friday forum. Um, today we will be talking about the TV Reach project from the Stop TV Partnership and the new Wave 11 that is opening up for um, um, for applications. Um, by the 17th of January, you are all, uh, who, those who are interested in projects that are making an impact at the country level, um, at the front lines, and specifically at the primary health care um, levels. So we're looking at frontline provider projects, projects that are engaging communities, projects that are integrating health services um, with other diseases or with a variety of sectors, whether it's the private sector or the communities. That's what we're looking for in this uh, TB Reach uh, Grand Wave 11. We are very pleased to have a distinguished panel today with a lot of experience. Um, you will, and I'm going to quickly introduce everyone. We will make sure that all the extended bios are going to be available for you on our website, and you'll be able, able to look at all the details later. So as you all know, this will be live streamed on YouTube as well. We will put the link to the YouTube in the chat for those of you who don't have immediate access to Zoom. And the report as well as the recording will be available after this meeting. So from now on, I will um, introduce first our speakers. So we're very happy to have with us Carrie Lee Meyer. She works for the GAC, which is the um, Canadian Government uh, Foreign Affairs. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. Gag, I've never really uh, pronounced it. Global Affairs is. Canada. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And uh, Carrie will be um, providing a short introduction. Then Jacob Cresswell from the Stop TV Partnership, who is the team lead of the TV Reach, will be giving a short presentation for us. And then we dive into a panel with... Um, various people from various countries who have a wonderful experience on the TB Reach project in previous waves. Um, and I'm going to do that once we have had the presentations, I'll call on all the panelists to um, actively um, provide a short background on their work and um, then I'll introduce each of them. So for now, I would like to ask Carrie Lee Meyer, who has uh, extensive experience in public health, has worked on various projects, even in Sudan, and, and is now actively working on the desk of global health and nutrition in uh, here in Canada, in, in Ottawa. And uh, GAC is one of the supporters of the TB Reach um, project and the TB Reach Fund. So I would like to uh, maybe give a few words of why you think this is a good initiative and, um, and just open the meeting for us, please, Carrie. Super. Thanks so much, Petra. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's a pleasure to see so many people uh, here at this event uh, to learn more about uh, TB Reach. Um, so I'm here alongside with uh, my colleague, uh, Nasir Ibrahim Hale, who works alongside me in Global Affairs Canada's Health and Nutrition Bureau. We're really interested in learning more from various organizations about their experiences in receiving funding from TB Reach. Canada places a great importance on ending TB and recognizes the, the fantastic leadership that Stop TB is showing in, global, in the global efforts to help us do this. 
As one of the longstanding partners in the global fight against TB, Canada is proud to be a long-term supporter of TB Reach. Canada is providing $25.5 million to support initiatives under TB Reach's Wave 11. This brings Canada's total support for TB Reach since 2010 to over $240 million. Through the TB Reach initiative, we have a unique opportunity to support innovative projects to help improve the, de the detection and treatment of TB, particularly in the most vulnerable populations. We also believe that Wave 11 has a really important theme, innovative approaches to integrate TB service delivery with other diseases at the primary and community level. We know that community engagement is essential to preventing and treating TB. We also know this can't be done in isolation from other infectious diseases. Wave 11 will also have a focus on gender responsive interventions for people with or affected by TB. This will help address the unique gender dimensions of the TB response. As we know, women and girls are affected by TB in different ways due to age-related social and health inequalities, stigma and discrimination, and exposure to the infection as caregivers. The road to ending TB is a challenging one, but our collective efforts are making a difference. So thanks so much for this opportunity to be here with you today. I'm super excited to hear all the presentations and all of the engagement. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carrie, and uh, welcome Nazir to you as well. Um, we're very happy to have you both with us. And I'm pleased to hand over now to um, Dr. Jacob Cresswell, who is leading the TB Reach initiative in the Stop TB Partnership. Uh, Jacob, the floor is yours, and please, um, we're looking forward to hear, hearing backgrounds on TB Reach and Wave 11 specifically. Thank you, Petra, and thank you, Carrie and Nasir, for the introduction. And also, as, as you all heard, the really um, amazing support over 13 years. It's a long, it's been a long um, engagement and we're really, really uh, proud of, of the support that we've, we've had from Canada. So um, I will talk, uh, I have 10 minutes I've been told um, to talk about wave 11. It probably won't be enough time, uh, but uh, I will give, try to give a, a general overview and there's a lot of information on our website uh, at stoptb.org and, and TB Reach. You can just Google TB Reach Wave 11 for a lot of background information. And um, you can also write to TB Reach at stoptb.org for any, if you want to ask questions and, and we respond, we try to respond to any question that, that comes in. Uh, so, okay, can people see? Does the screen move? Yes. Okay. No, so I'm going to. The screen doesn't move, Jacob. It's still the main uh, uh, slide. Okay. Now it moves. I hope. Yes. Great. Okay. So I'll talk a little bit about the theme, uh, considerations and examples, and talk about the eligibility criteria and uh, the timelines for, for funding. As has been said now a, a couple of times, the, this theme is a continuation of uh, one of the themes in wave 10, which is integrating service delivery. Um, and it's a little more focused this time. It's integrating service delivery with, with lung health spe more specifically. And we're also really looking at trying to bring care uh, as close to people as possible. And, and that will integrate with primary healthcare, but also community. Uh, the community level as well. So all proposals for Wave 11 should aim to improve the detection and care of people with TB. They should aim to promote people-centered uh, integrated service delivery for TB and at least another lung health uh, condition or disease, but as, as, and bring that care as close to the point of, of need as possible. Uh, Carrie mentioned the uh, gender responsiveness. Uh, I'll get to that in, in a moment. Um, but uh, empowering women and girls as a broader systems issue and including a gender responsive 
uh, approach to your intervention will be uh, very important, especially as, as we get to stage two. And also we're really um, increasingly focused on, on pushing our, our partners to engage both with uh, local, their, their, their national governments, their local governments, um, as well as larger uh, mechanisms around, around potential for continued funding. So in terms of bringing care uh, close to the point of need, uh, primary health care focuses on people's needs, both the individual needs and the community, the, the, the smaller communities, um, and, and more localized, uh, tailored interventions. And in that sense, we, what we're looking for in an in, in application is for, for the proposals to identify the problem and propose a solution. It's it's really important that in your applications, you can show what the barriers are for uh, people not pe people being missed by the system uh, for TB, but also for for other conditions as well. And how your intervention can uh, uh, identify and 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 impact those those barriers and overcome them. Uh, we're looking at a the 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 five C's of, of primary health care, the first contact with the health system, comprehensive interventions, coordinated and integrated service delivery, continuity of care, which is is also important, and, and person-centered care. And I, I want to make a, a note on 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 four, the continuity of care. In wave 10, we saw a lot of proposals trying to do a lot of different things. And a lot of screening was happening, is happening. And what we've noticed is that uh, some of the interventions are having a hard time taking people who they find with, with uh, other conditions, non-TB conditions, whatever they may be, and linking them to care. So they can identify, but we wanna make sure that those linkages are, are addressed. Now we need to bring the the care to the closest to the point of need. So that's at the community level, as low as low down in terms of of, of where people are uh, and where people have access to services. So that doesn't mean that if there is there is a need that that um, you know those linkages have to be made to other parts of the healthcare system. We're, we're very aware of that. That not everything can be done at a primary or community level of care. Uh, so it is fine to include, um, um, the, the, it is important to include those linkages, but the first point of care we're looking at uh, at primary community care level. So we are looking uh, for people to, 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 to improve the, the experience for people seeking care, removing access barriers, saving time and costs. Uh, all of these things can be built into the proposal and, 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 and you can look at that as, as, as barriers and how your, your proposal can um, address those barriers. It is also important to note, this is part of a larger health system, uh, of course, and we do want to avoid duplication of efforts. Uh, you should, in your applications, you should be aware and describe uh, other efforts that are being made and, and how your proposal doesn't duplicate those efforts and maximizes the synergies. Uh, it is also important to note that the, the Wave 11 proposals, they, they must include for this integration piece, they must include something, some other lung health condition, right? Based on local needs. But once you have that, there is, so you can do TB and lung cancer, and then you can also do mental health or malnutrition, but you must, you cannot just have an application that is looking at TB and mental health, for example. It must include at least one other um, uh, lung condition. We also, it's also important to note that because of the work that has already happened, TB 
proposals looking at TBHIV and TB diabetes should not be the focus of wave 11 proposals. So I don't want to give, um, I don't, uh, we, we really try not to give, uh, be prescriptive at all. Um, but I, I just wanted, we wanted to put a couple ideas down so that you can see that there's, there's many different approaches to this that would be completely acceptable. And, and again, please don't take these, um, these points as something that we're looking for, but um, you should be able to see on the screen that we can look at, um, we, we do want to see that linkage to care, but we can, you can look at uh, doing integrated screening multiplex testing. You can uh, look at, at, multiple entry points, um, but we don't want to see just doing TB screening at MCH clinics or TB screening at nutrition uh, clinics um, or whatever it is. Uh, it, it should be, um, we, we, we do want you to think a, a little bit broader than that. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll I know. I'm getting close to my 10 minutes and I have a few slides left. Um, we certainly expect applications around active case finding, um, moving diagnostics. Uh, there's a, a number of TB diagnostics that are available and new diagnostics that are coming in. You can look about how to bring those diagnostics uh, closer to the point of need. They can include evaluations of new diagnostics. Um, and and multiplex multiplex testing platforms. Uh, this this forum the the PPM forum is uh, is certain we we certainly encourage uh, private sector engagement uh, for integrated service delivery and this is important because for many conditions actually there are no programs in in, in the ministries and a lot of people are actually seeking care for TB as well as many other conditions in in the private sector. We're absolutely interested in hearing about proposals that looking at digital health solutions and also social protection from, from TB and other diseases. Um, and then I, I just uh, a slide on, on the cross-cutting components I don't and empowering women uh, and gender responsiveness. You will see in the application details that this is, there, there are um, some components of this in the, the proposal, but we will go from several hundred proposals to uh, just over a hundred proposals in stage two, which I'll get to in a second. And um, the, there will be a much more focused set of questions on empowering women and gender response in stage two. We're looking at proposals that are addressing key populations, uh, populations that are not necessarily served by uh, the routine health system. And again, thinking about sustainability, the engagement with TB programs or other uh, parts of the, the ministry. We have a very, and it's all on the website, uh, Canada, thanks to Canada, we have a very wide uh, country eligibility uh, criteria. So there's more than 90 countries that are eligible. You can submit multiple proposals from uh, uh, an organization in, in a country and multi-country proposals are accepted. In terms of organizational, uh, organizational eligibility, primary recipients of the TB REACH funds must be non-governmental, non-for-profit organizations, uh, and they must have a presence delivering TB service, delivering services in, in that country, not necessarily TB, sorry. Uh, we will give extra preference or points to primary applicants that are locally registered and uh, so that means that government TB programs are not eligible, but we do encourage uh, TB programs to be included as subrecipients. The grant ceiling for these grants is 550,000. Again, all of this information is online. The last slide I just want to um, highlight is our timeline. Um, we are now uh, between the second and third bullet and um, stage, there, there's, this is a two-stage review process. Stage one will end in mid-January, and all applications will be reviewed by our proposal review committee, which is being uh, constituted uh, these days. 
the, those that group of people will review all of the proposals. We are expecting several hundred, as I as I mentioned, and of those proposals, uh, about probably 15, 20% of them will be selected to move on to a stage two process, which will be um, happen in, in March and, and April. And those, those proposals will be reviewed in May of 2024. The proposal review committee will submit their funding decisions, recommendations to uh, our executive committee in June, uh, which we expect a, a rapid approval and then grant negotiations and signing will happen over the summer in Geneva. And we expect to have all selected applicants come together for an initial kickoff meeting uh, in the fall, in, in, in October probably of 2024. Again, if you have any questions, I can, we can take them of course uh, uh, in the chat. You can also write to tbreach at stoptb.org and we do try to get answers uh, back as, as quickly as possible. Uh, if you if there's things that you cannot um, find through the, the documents online. And thanks and sorry if I went a little bit over. Thank you, Jacob. That's uh, essential information and uh, wonderful that you've also outlined not just what the criteria are for application, but also uh, a very good overview of some concrete ideas um, that will guide the many people in this um, meeting and, and around the world that are working on TB programs to look at the integrated component as you have described so well. So um, now I would like to um, ask our wonderful panel and I'm going to quickly introduce. Um, so we have with us um, five fantastic people who have worked on TB Reach proposals and projects and implemented them in the previous waves. And with us are Kins Uleman, who is the CEO of the Pasi Foundation, uh, Surya Prakash Rai, who has a deep interest in TB care management, and he's leading TB programs at Innovators in Health in India, Buisili Shibi, who is the research project director at the Center for Community-Based Research at, at HSRC in South Africa, and Rabia Kaji, who is the head of monitoring and evaluation and the TB portfolio at Chapta Plus in uh, Tanzania, Suresh Kumar uh, Shestra, who is a medical doctor right now doing his PhD, but used to work with um, Save the Children in Nepal and has also been actively implementing TB Reach projects. So each of you, I'm, I'm glad to see that you have your cameras on. And I would like you to reflect on, Jake, based on Jacob's presentation and the criteria that he has outlined and also the um, points that he has put forward in terms of what are eligible projects. Could you give us some, based on your work that you have done with TB Reach, give us a short um, example of the work that you have successfully implemented within your country to help end TB? And maybe highlight one or two examples that are specifically relevant for this wave 11 that you have done in terms of engaging private healthcare providers at the front lines or integrating services within a wider context at the front lines within the primary care system. If you can give us some examples of your work. So I'm, I'm starting with Kins. Kins, I know you've done fantastic work. Can you just explain, maybe take two minutes to go a little bit uh, into your projects? Please take the floor from me, Kins. And anyone else, the floor is open for questions. Please put your questions in the chat. We will pick them up either to panel members or to Jacob or Carrie or anyone else who's here. Please um, put them in so we can add them to the discussion. Kins, your, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Petra. Thank you, Jake and Carrie for the deep presentations and talk. Uh, so the BASI has been uh, fortunate enough thanks to the support from partnership and the donors that accomplished have been part of multiple waves. So certain examples that I would like to show would be minors, which are a key population and are vulnerable for both TB as well as other lung diseases. And because the access to service was a key challenge through the generous support we were able to mobilize for the first time globally, ultra portable handheld x-rays equipped with artificial intelligence and we could take them to the coal mining sites 
in literally the unreachable areas where there was no facility, no, no nothing, no concept of even healthcare service delivery. So we take uh, quite pride in that to sort of make the service accessible, bring the service near to the people who need them. And thanks to the uh, ultra portable X-ray and the AI, we were able to screen not only for TB, but rather get a comprehensive uh, scenario. Another example that comes to my mind that was supported by TB Reach under wave eight was engagement of pharmacies uh, to use pharmacies as a tracker to reach the people who are getting medicine from the pharmacies but are not being notified to the national authorities and maybe not uh, uh, be getting the medicines as per the national guidelines or might not be taking the medicines for throughout the period. And through this intervention, we were able to notify uh, more than 16,000 people affected by TB in four quarters. The TB reach projects are uh, short implementation, so you really need to hit the ground running. That was also a key. When in one of the recent interventions, uh, we were able to, uh, this was for MDRTB, and we were able to uh, engage uh, with people affected by disease, reach out to their contacts, screen contact. And excitingly, till now, the pre-treatment loss to follow up as well as during treatment loss to follow up is 0%, which initially we started with 38% in some of, some of the target areas. So there has been uh, uh, achievements on making care accessible, engaging with the private sector, and then bringing certain innovations that were not possible to, to make the care delivery uh, more uh, acceptable, more friendly for the patients. So, and one other thingy, maybe I'm going about my time. Uh, one other thing that uh, is a recent experience is in the TB preventive treatment area. Where till now the numbers being placed on preventive treatment are not that high. However, the system that has been developed, training of the professional, development of uh, tools for the uh, for uh, for sort of TPT, and then really helping the government really take it up. So uh, the the uh, even the health systems indicators the way the health system is developing and being more proactive and uh, sort of it, that it can also start in the longer run. Uh, so that that is quite exciting. Yeah, that is it from my side. Thank you, Thank you Kins. These are um, excellent examples. We'll hear a little bit more about the minor population from Rabia as well. And uh, the pharmacy engagement that you've done as but right now being scaled up throughout the country with funding from the Global Fund. So that in itself is a massive success. Um, and, and I thank you so much for highlighting the connection with the health system. I'm calling on Surya. Maybe um, you're com coming in from India and you've gone through several waves where you've uh, done some of the project. Would you Can you enlighten us a little bit about your work in IIH? Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Petra, and thank you so much for giving us this chance. Uh, so IH has completed like three waves and we are ongoing like wave nine and wave 10 uh, that's still uh, ongoing. And uh, some of the fantastic achievements and some of the fantastic things which we have been able to do because of the partnership support. So diagnostics is one critical part which we actually could benefit through through through, through the grant support. And CBNA device, which was which was not used to be in in the districts in the intervention area which we had, but because of the devices, the diagnostics increased rapidly, and we were able to like based on the historical data, we almost uh, quadrupled the case fund case finding rates over the periods of time. So so that was the early phases when we started in wave five. So it was a small pilot uh, like the intervention which we did gradually over the waves, the scale also increased. So apart from the diagnostics parts, the uh, what TB Reach project has also enabled us to work on the capacity building of the community health workers, because these are the frontline workers. These are the workers who were contributing to case finding and also the treatment ad adherence. So the incentives which which we which were we were able to ensure that they were getting timely in, uh, incentives and because of that the patient care was happening. So that actually also ensured that the system took the ownership gradually. The health system because we were always 
PBDH projects always gave us a chance to pilot out certain things, implement, show it to the health system, and they in turn were, were taking up things. Some innovations which really helps, for example, uh, and the biggest part of the of the grant uh, of the grant support and which we were able to also take care was during the COVID round because COVID, the pandemic saw a lot of upheavals and so many things. Diagnosis was not happening. The government system was completely cut off. And we demanded this extra devices, the CBNAT devices from, from, the, from the partnership. The partnership supported us with that. And that led to the upfront uh, CBNAT testing, which, which was happening. So this is gradually now going to become the guidelines in the government system as well. So mostly around the uh, the case finding and also treatment adherence in the current waves, for example, in the DRTB, we, uh, a lot of drug shortages is there. A lot of supply shortage, shortages are there. The line probe essay labs are not, not actually uh, uh, so functional. So these, these contributions, which, which we were able to do was because of the grant support. And that's how it's con contributing to finding additionalities to the cases and treatment. And there are a lot of things, but I would like my other friends also to share about their experience. We'll, we'll come back to you, Surya, and thank you so much for highlighting how the grant has been able to give you access to TrueNet and these um, diagnostics that are really, which also Kins highlighted with the um, mobile x-ray machines, uh, the, the, the diagnostics and bringing the diagnostics to the people instead of referring mechanisms for people to move around is really a key piece that um, I'd like to highlight. And as some of you might also be aware of the 146 campaign that is focusing on that aspect as well. And with that comes also the shorter regimens. And this is an aspect that would be great to also look at as a potential opportunity to bring into your proposals. So I would now like to move to South Africa and give Muisile a chance. You have been working with primary healthcare providers in the private healthcare sector. So Muisile, maybe you can give us uh, the lens of the work that you've been doing with the TB reach project and explain a little bit of your key points of success. Um, th thank you, uh, Petra, and good afternoon, everyone. So as you know, in South Africa, TB is primarily addressed in the public sector. But however, uh, through the recent re evidence, um, it suggests that TB might be missed or delayed in the private sector. So through a uh, TB reach funding wave eight, which was in 2020, 2021, we introduced a pilot a study in one of the high TB burden health district to connect private general practitioners to free TB testing using gene expect in the public sector. So from this project, we were able to consent about 158 private GPs who were practicing in a Tequini district. So we only focused in one district. And from those uh, GPs that participated, uh, about 61, uh, 61 GPs submitted exist one spaceman for TB testing in the public sector. So we were able to link uh, the private sector with um, public uh, TB testing. So from uh, 590 gene expect tests that were performed, 107 clients were diagnosed with TB. And what's interesting is that 61% of the TB diagnosed patients were men. So we were able to identify TB cases that were men through uh, this uh, partnership. And about 49% of the TB diagnosed patients were living with HIV. So um, for this um, study, we had requested uh, GPs to ensure that at the point of contact, they inquire about the HIV status of the patient, which we all know that the TB care uh, requires um, the, the knowledge of the HIV status of the patient. And we were able to link um, 100 patients uh, to TB treatment, and mostly they were linked to the private sector, to, to the public sector. I think we might have lost. Um, patients. Oh, there she is. Go ahead. Go ahead, do we see this? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So we had um, 100 uh, clients were linked to care, and of those, 88 completed treatment. We also had about three uh, uh, clients who were DRTB, but unfortunately, the study completed before they could finish their course. So what I would like to mention is that through the TB grant, we were able to uh, engage private GPs to screen patients in their offices. And if the patient is symptomatic, we're able to link them to 
uh, TB services. And we were able to diagnose TB clients quicker and link them to care timely. We also provided telephonic adherence support where we walk through with the patient from diagnosis to TB uh, to uh, to uh, treatment completion. And through this project, we're able to raise awareness that TB does exist also in the private sector. And lastly, through the partnership between the private and the public healthcare sectors, we can assist in the ending of TB in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Busile. And, and obviously, as Jacob also mentioned, but you clearly highlight the integration, the patient comes with many multiple aspects, not just with TB to the private practitioners. And so this is an excellent um, way to look at integrated care. People come in with um, respiratory illnesses or many other issues. So the, the project that you set up with the telephone connections and with the follow-up work and with the connections and the linkages between the healthcare system is a good example that you could be looking at. Um, I would like to now move to Suvish. Um, Suvish, in Nepal, you've worked on a multiple different um, aspects. So could you enlighten us with the TB REACH grant, maybe some of the examples, um, thinking about what Jacob has outlined as the larger kind of criteria, can you highlight some of the successes from within Nepal? Uh, thank you, Petra, and good morning from here. I'm sorry, I'm a bit down under the weather, so my voice might sound different. Uh, but thank you for the opportunity, and I'm very thrilled to share what TB Reach has done uh, and its impact on TB program in Nepal. Uh, when I was working as an advisor to the National TB program, and what I have observed and what I have seen. Uh, so Nepal received its first TB Reach grant in 2009, and I think they are continuing to benefit from its support. Uh, with TB Reach grant, Nepal program ha has a pivotal impact. Uh, in shaping our strategy and intervention. And few of the examples that I want to share was uh, one example of gene expert in wave two uh, in 2012-11, Nepal received the uh, TBRIDGE grant and uh, TBRIDGE grant helped Nepal introduce and implement gene expert for the first time, which now has now emerged as a cornerstone for a TB diagnosis. Uh, this initiative has led the foundation for the current landscape where Nepal has over 100, 1, 100 gene experts uh, and are operating in every district of Nepal. And the gene expert is a, the primary tool of diagnosis um, in Nepal and boosting the case detection. So TBRH has always supported the innovation and implementation of the innovative diagnostics. But it's not only that, TBRH has a, a great impact in increasing the TB case notification. Uh, TB Reach has always engaged with uh, local TB organization and empowered the communities, uh, female uh, uh, community health volunteer uh, to reach the vulnerable and hard to reach population, uh, to do the intensive case finding among them, and have also resulted in additional 1,000 uh, TB cases uh, detection in 2016 among those hard to reach communities. TB Reach has also helped uh, uh, collaborate with the uh, uh, private sector uh, in two of the high burden districts of Nepal, uh, and which have resulted in almost 10% increase in bacteriological compound cases um, uh, for compared to the baseline. Uh, and uh, uh, TB Reach, Nepal has a diverse topography. Uh, with the help of TB Reach, we were able to introduce sputum collection and transportation uh, with the help of the local community volunteers, empowering them. And this has enabled uh, us to access uh, to reach the to send uh, or increase the access of TB diagnostics and treatment to those remote areas. Uh, and recently, TBRIS has collaborated with national program to introduce AI uh, for detection of TB through test X-ray, and which has further enhanced early detection and capabilities. So I think uh, TBRIS has a huge impact in national program and fight against TB for early detection, uh, increased case notification, uh, timely and comprehensive treatment, and also innovative approach uh, to reach specially underserved population. Thank you, Petra. Thank you, Subesh, and, and I think you've highlighted many examples that will resonate with participants. Um, I'm, I'm looking around the room and I'm, I really would like you to encourage to take this opportunity to ask questions. 
about the proposals that you have in mind, the ideas that you have, these people here on our panel, all of us are willing to answer in the chat or directly. So please put your questions in, in the chat so that we can take them up. And while you're thinking about your questions, I'm going to ask um, Rabia to talk about yeah, her work you know, in Tanzania I, and yeah, give us um, some, um, please, <clears throat> sorry, Rabia. Um, if you can just highlight some of this work that you've done in TB Reach uh, within Tanzania in the northern uh, mining populations. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Petra, uh, for this uh, session and to go direct because of uh, limited time. So we and uh, Shidefa Plus were able to receive a TB Reach grant uh, during 2017, which went through um 2020 because uh, it was a web five then it had it due to it as well. so mainly it was focused on the integration of tb and um, hiv services provision but uh, the work was really um supported by the good number of community health workers because uh, um when we started in web five we had the 240 community health workers who supported the whole process of tb um sensitization screening sputum correction leafers and uh, tracing of people who are notified with tb but we really focused on the key and vulnerable population, which included the female sex workers, um, but also the mining populations, um, the MSM. At first, we also had the MSM, but due to government issues, we had to stop them during the second quarter of the implementation. And then we only remained with the children, adults, then female sex workers, and the mining communities. So because of the need of the services, we had to put innovative um, strategies to for example, in the mining communities, we understand that they are very busy um, with their work at 24-7, you know, days they are busy digging the, the, the gold. So we had to introduce the moon, moonlight events where we can access them in the night time. So it was easier because we could put uh, info, information sessions on TB, then do the screening of tuberculosis, collect sputum collaboratively with the TB um, uh, laboratory technician, TB coordinators, you know, and the community health workers. And through that process, it was really um, good for us during the implementation to at least get more than uh, 700 you know, um, the mining population, but for the female sex workers, they are almost at 325. Um, we're able to get them. The adult population, we are also 1,000, you know, and for the children, they are 120. Those were the things which we were able to get. So also in terms of, uh, you know, misconception on the TB, especially during the sputum collection, uh, we had it to... Uh, we had it to, to, to use some SASA approach. SASA, this is, this is like start awareness, support, and action. These were the messages which you could like, to, where I used it to dispel some of the gender uh, issues around the provision of uh, sputum samples because it was hard by then. So we had that such kind of things, and it really uh, helps. And for the healthcare providers, uh, sometimes it was really biased, you know, especially for the female sex workers to access the service. So we had to provide KVP friendly services. And uh, through that uh, way, um, they started you now providing the service in a free way. So that really um, helped. So by having such kind of um, uh, engagement of the community health workers, training them, uh, supporting them with enablers, including incentives, the tools, you know, training them, the building, and et cetera, uh, which helps the notification uh, of the countries in the areas where we, we, we were implementing Nishinyanga and Geita region. So because now you can't see the data here, but I think when I share, you'll be in a position to see the changes from the baseline implementation level, they have, um, we were able to to not find more cases. And looking at that period of implementation, so we see uh, changes of countries targeted during that period up to 5% as per WHO, those missed cases were able to contribute to the country's level. So with regards to what I said, so uh, screening, you know, screening is very important. So when you aim to achieve more TB case notification, then also the number of screening should uh, uh, should increase, you know. Uh, so now that comes in when setting the target, we need it to be um, clearly set them uh, during the design of the intervention. 
uh, then with that, it will be really helpful. Consider also the issue of our contact investigation because we do not only end on active case findings, but case findings, um, active, I mean, contact investigation was also of a paramount. Not only that, the relationship with the national TB programs is really important because that was the only way also facilitated the process for us to scale up now into another legend, but also expand the target to which we had. And in that process, we can see, you know, with TB leach, uh, it's an entry way, you know, for you if uh, you want to like receive any any other donor uh, gland in the area of TB, because through that TB leach, we're able to receive the, um, to be the subrecipients of the global fund uh, for round six, which we are finalizing. And luckily now this round also, um, we are in the process of completing the verification with the principal recipients. So, and it's because of the TB leach work. And through that process, we're able also to engage in USAID tuberculosis loan still in the area for sustainability through that work which was seen to be good by TB rich. So the USAID TB loan had to engage us to, to sustain the intervention which was brought in by the TB rich grant. So I encourage everyone of you, those who are interested to apply uh, to look for this because uh, it's an opportunity and it's all possible uh, to make it. What you need, I think you need to just there and do what is required because uh, you have got all the ability. Thank you, uh, Petra. Thank you, Rabia. Um, wonderful to hear the, that you also actively engage donors that are able to sustain the project be beyond the innovations that you have tried out and that you've been successful in that. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for um, putting questions in the chat. And um, Jacob has already responded to some of the questions that yes, you can apply um, as a new organization. Um, I, I see that there are um, also great comments in the chat with resources on having access to the new diagnostics and then the shorter TB regimens as part of the one for six campaign. Please draw on those resources in the writing of your um, your proposals. And I would like to call on Stephen. Stephen, John, if you're in the room, um, if you're willing to just give us a, a two words. I mean, know you made a comment and I would love to have you say um, one minute about the work that you've done in Nigeria. Um, so Stephen, please, if you can unmute yourself and put your camera on and um, just add your comment in, in, in person. Are you with us, Stephen? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here, Petra. Perfect, um, go ahead. Yeah, I, I am trying to. Okay, good. Th thank you very much. I, I didn't know about this meeting, but my attention was called and I joined and I'm happy to hear what I'm hearing. So, yeah, we have done a lot. We have implemented uh, six rounds now of uh, six waves of uh, TB reach. But uh, of note is this uh, this one where with, the, with the patent medicine vendors and the traditional healers. That is a private, uh, informal private uh, practitioners, you know. So in our part of the country, uh, this particular group of people thrive so much, especially in the community, in the hard to reach areas. There is no place you will go that you will not find a patent medicine vendors or a traditional healer at most. So, of course, interventions have targeted them in the past through some other organizations, but uh, they didn't work because uh, those I, I looked through some of the proposals. They expected the traditional healer or the patent medicine vendor in particular to do most of the work, you know, like filling the forms for the client to be screened, the presumptive TB cases, and then directing them to where to go, uh, interpreting the results when they come, linking them to care. But when we saw the difficulty that a, a patent medicine vendor cannot leave the work that he's being paid for, where he's getting his money to go and be filling forms for people, we decided to now bring up volunteers train them and attach them to this particular uh, people. So each patent medicine vendor had uh, a volunteer or two attached to him and each traditional healer the same. So that among their clients, if a presumptive uh, TB case is picked, a volunteer is, uh, is connected with him and then the patent medicine vendor or traditional healer can continue their own work while the volunteer processes this presumptive case uh, to the end, to the point of diagnosis. So that helped a lot. And uh, in Yobe State and Adama State, two of the states in the Northeast right now, this project has run for more than two years. We had a short cost, uh, costed extension, but even now that the project is over, we still continue to collect the data because the engagement process of the leadership of the patent medicine vendors and the traditional healers was so great. They were so interested. 
We didn't even know that they were trying to be relevant to the government, to show government that they can do something. So as part of their contribution, they have already called their people, mobilized their people to continue to identify presumptive cases and then get them screened and then link them to those centers. So that project has been sustained and is still running at this point after two years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Um, I, fantastic work in, in, northern, in northern Nigeria. And um, on each of these, I feel bad that we have so little time to go into the details because they are all such rich projects. We have many feature stories that have described the work that um, our panelists have um, put forward. And I'll make sure that in the report, we provide you with links to any presentations or any materials that they will be provided to us so that you can get further details in the work that you're doing in preparing your own proposals. What is becoming really clear is that from each of the proposals, it is about bringing the services to the people that are seeking care, instead of referring the people to numerous of different places. And I've heard many different examples of where diagnostics are being brought to the people or where there are um, community health workers attached to the care providers. So these are important components. I would like to go in the last 10 minutes that we have to each of our panelists and ask you for one advice if you would have to write a proposal right now for what for wave 11 what would you advise the people in the room here and anyone else that is interested in writing a proposal for the tb reach um what would you advise them based on your experience working in the tb reach grants who would like to start should i start with kins sure so my one advice would be, this is a short term mechanism. You're basically proposing a pilot. It's not business as usual. You need to really think about, think through what innovations can be bought, what linkages can be bought, what scenarios can work that can really make an impact that can really bring the services closer, bring the services more friendly, bring the services more uh, sort of to the needs of the patient now that we are thinking about integration. So not just going for TB, maybe think a sort of a screening for other intervention or maybe linking the patients to the private sector where they can uh, grasp. Proposals. So do think about the programmatic lens, but don't get too much caught up into the programmatic lens. Think about innovation, really bring the energy forward. And just to close, we're truly gra grateful to the awesome team uh, at Stop TV Partnership that supports this. Even if something is going to go wrong or if something is not going to result the way you planned, they are kind enough to let you adapt to the context and and they support you. We never were able to get the, the huge vans that we planned and they got us the ultra portable x-ray and we became a, a star in 23 other countries who are replicating this now. So just go wild, try to create the impact and they're going to be there to support you even in implementation. Thank you, Kins. I, I love the energy that you're bringing here. Um, Surya, what about you? The one piece of advice. I think, yeah, I agree with Kins, but, and also I would like to say like uh, what we do at our side, we do a thorough kind of need analysis. We do a lot of uh, assess what the exact situation is. Uh, we also try to get the insights from the ground team first, because they are the first implementers who are going to do. We engage with the community to understand what the system is. We do a lot of discussion around when we read the proposal guidelines and everything. We do a lot of discussions with our stakeholders, be it the community, be it the uh, TB survivors, be it the ongoing patients, be it the government uh, health providers. So a lot of insights is there gathered and what are the shortcomings. So our intervention is basically centered around what what we want to what the community actually needs and uh, some pilots which 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 we have uh, which we are trying to do or which we have done if those have given results so data enabled always look into whatever data which the uh, ntps data are there where we think that which area exactly is going to uh, help us in 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 this uh, in in, the, in any upcoming project so that actually has helped us a lot in the past Wonderful advice. Wonderful advice. Uh, Buisili, what about you? One piece of advice. Thank you, Petra. Um, from my side, I'd like to say um, 
raising awareness uh, through workshops, uh, trainings, media messaging to all relevant stakeholders before the study implementation will be one of the important piece because you, you will need their buy-in, you will need their support through the study. Uh, what we have noticed with working with the private sector, uh, any engagement with them to understand their priorities in relation to NDTB. So that will be also be important because they will need to understand how can they benefit from your proposed project. And also what we should also know is that um, working with the private sector, they don't want any extra load. So we, we need to find out how can we do the work without adding any extra work to them. Thank you. Really great point. Subish, what about you? <clears throat> yeah, agreeing with uh, all the panelists. Uh, I just want to focus that, uh, you know, uh, the proposal needs to be uh, community centered and community should be at the forefront. So it has to have something to engage and empower them to reach the unreached. Uh, and secondly, I also want to highlight that the proposal should be in line with NASA's strategic plan with a strong partnership with the national TV program so that we can ensure the coordinated effort as well as uh, efficient resource utilization, no duplication and all those things. Uh, like uh, uh, Jacob said, I think integration is a vital part of the, the project uh, in not only integrating within the program, but integrating uh, on the larger health system so that we can ensure beyond grant uh, continuity, which sometimes is a very much big challenge. And lastly, I also want to uh, focus on the part to be innovative. Don't afraid to be innovative because uh, so many examples have shown us that TV can open the door to introduce novel diagnostics as well as the uh, uh, intervention that lays the ground for scale up, scale up later on. So please be innovative in your grant. Thank you. Great points. What about you, Rabia? Yeah, um, thank you so much, Petra. For me, I really agree with all the panelists, but uh, I have a few things to um, for the team to, to take out. And uh, so for the TB Leach grant, you know, after signing grant, you'll be required to collect the baseline information. So you need to have the data at hand. And those data now, you'll be in position because you'll be required to report in the next quarter. You know, in the next quarter after you have received the grant, then you have to show, you know, to determine the additional number of TB patients which have been notified. But also not only that, um, how many have been successfully treated, you know, uh, during that time. So by doing so, I think um, uh, then TB Leach will be in position to know that uh, this program uh, is really doing great. And besides that, um, in your application or during the implementation, be able also to report the unexpected the bottlenecks or the challenges of which you think they are the cause of like uh, increasing the required uh, or reaching the required target. And by doing so, um, this will be uh, will be really good. But also build the team, make sure that the team which you have uh, is the right team. You know, they should have trust your grant uh, for success implementation. The rest of the things have been there and thanks so much, Petra. Fantastic points, uh, Rabia. Um, so if I, if I summarize in five words, what I've heard is be innovative, collaborate, integrate within the healthcare system and support the care providers that need uh, help and put your thoughts in evidence on the table to be able so that you can report and look uh, forward in longer term as well. Um, Jacob, I'm calling on you. Do you have one piece of advice that you want to add? And Carrie, I'm coming to you as well. So be prepared. You can close the meeting for us. Jacob, is there one piece of advice that you would like to leave this um, large group of participants with in their preparation? I would say um, make your make your argument about what the problem is and how your your intervention is addressing it. it, it we get too many proposals that are great ideas, but they're not really addressing a problem. And uh, and I think that that would be a great, and don't, and don't spread yourself too thin. Don't try to do everything. Focus on one or two really good ideas that address a, a local need. Thanks again, really appreciate it. Sorry, I was muted. That, those are excellent points um, that I think will resonate with everyone. 
So we're at the end of the hour. Um, thanks to everyone who has been participating, putting questions in the chat, listening, uh, joining, wonderful models from um, on the ground, grassroots, real experience. And thank you for sharing your thoughts. This has been super helpful. Jacob, an excellent presentation to set the scene. And Carrie, thank you for opening the meeting. And can I ask you to formally close the meeting? We. Um, um, just before you do that, we will put the report up online. We will also open a forum for anyone who has further questions after this, and we will make sure that you'll get responses, and we'll put the link in the chat right now. Um, we'll make sure that the presentation and everything that's been said will be available online for anyone who wants to look back. The recording is also available on YouTube. And with that, I'll ask Gary to close the meeting, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone next time. Carrie, go ahead. Thank you so much, Petra. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you so much for organizing this informative event. Thank you to our panelists. Um, this has not only been uh, informative, it's also been really inspiring. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to learn more from um, the actual implementers of, uh, of TB Reach on the ground and to see that sharing of information, that sharing of examples and lessons learned from such a variety of contexts um, with all of the participants. I think this has been so very valuable. So thank you very, very much for this and, and uh, for Jacob for presenting on uh, on TB Reach and, and Wave 11. Canada is uh, so very uh, pleased to see such fantastic use of, uh, of the resources and uh, for all of your efforts uh, to end TB. So thank you very much and wishing everyone a wonderful day. And I'm going to just say wishing everyone a wonderful weekend because for most of us, it's the end of the day. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, all the panel members. And thanks, everyone. Um, I can only promise that we will be back uh, with many more Friday forums and webinars uh, on the TVPPM Learning Network platform. And please look out for exchanges. And we're looking forward to hearing from all of you in the next panel. Thank you so much. And till soon. Goodbye.